part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birdwine. You're listening to The Krypton Report. every time what's up at least at least we come on smiling because it's good yeah yeah Yeah. how's it going it's going well man i'm just for everybody out there watching like this is our second we're keeping strong it's february we're two for two with our once a month live shows (laughs) um you know um i hope uh you know some people join us that's cool if they don't that's it it's still fun to talk to you just like normal Got some things to talk about, got some things to cover. Uh, we are having some technical issues here and there, but that's life and that's the internet. It's the world we live in, people, sadly. But here's some funny, James, you got your water? Got your water bottle with you? I got my water. My water bottle. Didn't plan yeah. it, people. It, it <laughs> didn't plan it. This, this is just, uh, I got water because I'm- Just got my water. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> But because it's late and uh, <laughs> that was funny, I have my official Krypton Report coffee mug. <sighs> Tastes like crap. Uh, the coffee, not the mug. <clears throat> For some reason, I just can't seem to make good coffee anymore. Everything I make tastes like garbage. Um, and I just want to throw this out there. This has nothing to do with the podcast, but. I I am personally like deeply offended because I feel like every episode we talk about and we praise how much we love Zoa. But ever since Zoa decided to shrink their cans from 16 ounce to 12 ounce, change their flavors and packaging, every store by me doesn't carry them anymore. And they've all been replaced by a different like energy drink. And I don't drink any other energy drink but Zoa. Oh no. So now now I can only find Zoa at Sheets. Where they're, where they're overly priced or Walmart where they don't keep them in stock because people buy them. So me, uh, Levi, friend of the show, and Austin, friend of the show, host of the Shazam cast, are all having the same issue. So Zoa, you've really let us down. I don't know if it's because they're trying to recoup some money from the loss of Black Adam no. or something. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's horrible. Uh, um, the... Uh... I, you know, I, I didn't get any, I was getting mine in a 12 pack at Costco. So, um, I didn't get any yesterday when we went, I didn't, I didn't need any energy drinks. Yeah. Cause you just run on pure sunlight and sunshine and that smile. You probably got like, a, I don't know, something in that beard that just keeps you pumping. But Hey, for those turning in, uh, let's properly yeah. introduce ourselves. Oh, I am, oh, yeah. I am, <laughs> Um, Catch a sunlight like the leaves do of trees. Exactly. Um, Just so everyone, there seems to be a little bit of a delay in our conversation. So we're going to work with that as best we can. So, hey, it's all new. It's all fun. It's all part of the show. Show must go on, right? Yep. So I am Tyler, uh, your host, the Superman of Blue, and this on my right left because it's reverse is james the super of red what's up man <laughs> hey i'm here all right so we're gonna i got our our news and reviews and everything but we're gonna start with something simple um so we're gonna start with things that are just kind of up that i didn't even really realize so i don't know if you remember this but Greg Berlanti was working on another DC show. He was working on a, a version of the Dead Boy Detectives. And there was a post that the Dead Boy Detective series is moving away from HBO and is now going to Netflix. Is it still being made? And is it going anywhere else? Well, I mean... I'm I'm curious because, you know, we we have heard that DC 
was particularly looking at selling projects to other places, you know, Warner's was, um, and they have that relationship at Netflix with Sandman. So I don't know, but I just thought it was interesting. It was one of those things I forgot was even something. Um, we also, so that's a thing. Let's talk a little bit about our other friend with the bolt of lightning on his chest for a minute. Uh, Shazam. Shazam. <laughs> Shazam tickets are now on sale. They have gone on sale, and I feel like the marketing train is up high. But part of me, James, fears that Shazam's going to get lost in the marketing and just have I have a bad feeling it's going to be a really good movie. It's not going to do really well at the box office because it's just going to get lost. Mm. I mean, that'll be sad. Um you know, I, I don't know. It's it's if the marketing push does well and it gets some general audience eyes in. If it's a good movie to the general audience, like the first one was, like the first one got kind of shorted with its time in the theater there. Mm hmm. So I I don't know. I just it's I have a bad feeling. Like Han Solo said, and Obi Wan Kenobi, and Obi Wan Kenobi and someone in every Star Wars movie. So we'll see. But we also, I saw an advertisement for Shazam playing, have you heard of these, the two, 270 degree theaters? Have you seen these advertised? Oh, I did see a, I did see a video of it, of, of Shazam playing 270 degrees, like the, the dragon screen. coming up and it like, yeah, it's three screens, it's but the screen. screens are separated too. It's not like it's one big panoramic screen. I know it was weird, and I was like, "Wow, that looked really cool." But the only theater in like the U.S. is like in Kansas City. So, oh wow, I'm like, oh well, nah. all right. Now you just fly down to Kansas. Yeah, yeah. I was like, kids, we're gonna leave for the movies now and start driving. Um. But the Shazam theme song dropped. And I was pretty pumped to listen to it because I, I really liked Benjamin Walfish, his score for the first Shazam, and he's been replaced as the composer. And this time, I'm pulling it up right now. It's Chris Beck, I think. Yeah, Chris Christoph Beck. And it's not, I guess it's Christoph, because there's no R at the end. Um, and I listened to it in the car and Janina has got really great speakers in her car. So I kind of waited all of us to listen to it in the car and it was good, but it felt kind of weak. I'm a little disappointed in it. Oh, really? I just, and it says, you know, Shazam Fury of the Gods title theme. So I was expecting something, you know. Because, I mean, no matter what you think about the Black Adam. A little more grandiose about the gods, you know? It's Fury yeah. of the Gods. All right. Hey, we got Sean Stockhouse here. He says, I hope Shazam is good. I really enjoyed the first film. Us too, man. Us too. Like, I love the first film. I sit James as well. Ranking. Yes. Um, it's in my top five. And I just, like I said, I, I, I bet the film was going to be really good. But I bet it's just not going to get the box office it deserves. I don't. I. I not that that's what I want. That's not what I want at all. I just feel like we're, we're in this, such this weird marketplace now, where we have people who are like. I hope it trained. at least doubles the first movie. I I want it to too, but my problem is this. You know, look, break four or five hundred million. Look! Look how many movies come out, like big movies, in March. And people know it's going to hit HBO in 45 days. So I just feel like it might be, it might suffer that way. And I, I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I really, I really do. But you have a big... I hope you're wrong too. Good. I, I do. <laughs> um, the other thing that's kind of bothering me is today I got an email from DC Direct that you know, there's new, there's all this new Shazam merchandise in their store on DC. Well, well, that's great. But I'm not seeing anything new on SuperheroStuff.com. I'm not seeing anything in just like your Walmart or your Target. There's been yeah. 
Wow. No toys for Shazam. None. Um, only we got one McFarlane figure, but no, you know, Spin Master toys for kids or nothing for Shazam. We got another comment up here. Let's see. Now that DC is rebooting, I don't know if any of these films will do that well, except maybe The Flash because of Keaton. And that movie means for reset. And, you know, that's a very, very possible um, comment. You know, that's, it, it could happen. Um, so I, I don't know. Yeah. You know, the, the, the thing, though, is is we we as as podcasters and people who look up this news try and find this news out you know we understand that the reboot is coming and and, uh you know if if the movie appeals to the general audience and it gets a good word of mouth they're not gonna know that the the reset like that this movie doesn't mean anything that it that it may not or it may not continue or anything like that they just know that perhaps they saw the first one and and hopefully you know go to the see the second one and it get a decent turnout compared to the first one yeah i mean that's kind of where um kind of where i'm at like i'm I'm, like i said i'm hoping i'm not i'm always positive and i i've learned that i don't even want to be negative to something else and uh and Sean here agrees with you. He says, that's a good point. The normies probably have no idea the reset is coming. God bless you, normies, because you have money. Now, I, about the McFarlane figure, <laughs> I sent you this picture. There could be a secret McFarlane figure coming for the movie. Um, it, was, it looked like a leaked uh, box for, the, for this character. And... I double checked it with a previous figure's mold to kind of see if someone had just maybe done some cut and paste work. And it looks like it could be pretty legit. So this could be a spoiler, but a certain person could, who's already rumored to be in Shazam, could be a McFarlane figure. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, I saw it. I mean, I, I hope. You know, we we spoke about it before. I hope that's the case. Yep, me too. Because I need that person's figure. Um, to go in my oh, yeah. movie side collection. Um, let's see what else we got here. Okay. Yeah, hey. one one figure missing from a from a particular movie. <laughs> um, movie line. We have four posters that dropped for Shazam. Individual posters being Billy Shazam and then the three female leads, like the two daughters of Atlas we know, and then the one they're trying to keep. Mysterious. I think we saw the name of the character on the back of the um, the Funko Pop yeah, um, thing, but I, I don't remember the name of the character. So it was that, uh, Rachel Ziegler's yeah. character. It's Anthea. And so Anthea. Anthea. There. Yeah, it's got it on the poster. Hes- Hespera is uh, Helen Marin. And then Calypso is um, Lucy Lou. Lucy Lou. And you know, I, I had hoped that, <coughs> excuse me, that these. Uh, the three were going to kind of be like the three like Greek mythology wizards, the uh, the weird sisters, you know, the three witches type thing from Macbeth slash, you know, Greek mythology and everything, sharing the one eye type thing. I was wondering if they were like an extension of that, you know, cutting the cord. Um, so, you know, the sisters of fate and all that good stuff. But we'll see. We'll see. Um Moving on. That's that's all I have for Shazam. Anything else you think Shazam wise? Uh, I mean the 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 god's armor. I mean it looks fairly reminiscent of like the Amazon's armor. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like takes some inspiration from that type. So maybe the same. You know, but and then you know the suit, the Shazam suit looks good. So. 
Yeah, it does. I mean, I look forward to seeing it in action. But moving on. So anybody the out there action watching, of the whole family. Anybody out there watching The Flash? Raise your hand. The last season, the final run, Flash. Anybody? Hand raising. Hand, hand. You out there in the front row. That'd be just you, James, because I'm, I'm looking at. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just going to spoil this because I am i don't care. It's being leaked out there. There I just is need to drop. I just need to drop. I did, when he said, I just need to drop, I don't know if he was being facetious or he just dropped off the podcast like, peace. Because there he is. He's bad. <laughs> I need to drop. Sean's watching. No, Sean's raising so the, his hand. Um, there's a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I just need to drop this. in on 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 this last season. I I don't really know if there's anything from last season other than like just watch the last episode of last season. I think you'll be okay. Um, there's a behind the scenes photo that got me really excited, and then this was on Grant or someone's Instagram. You know, and it, I think it was announced, but Teddy Sears is back as Zoom. And there's a the behind-the-scenes photo of Savitar, Reverse Flash, Zoom, um, Godspeed, and then somebody else I won't say who. So I was like, that's pretty epic. Like, I hope they can pull this off really well with all the evil speedsters um, and really make this final season awesome. Um, so far, it's been me. Uh, the second episode been, was better. Or third episode, sorry, was better. But we're only three episodes in. We only got ten more to go, and then it's over. So, I really hope with the oh wow. Um, I really hope with Red Death they are doing the dark multiverse, and it's not just going to be like an alternate Earth thing or something. I don't know. I really hope they do kind of play into it better. Um, who? Okay. Who's your one specific? Cameo, one specific cameo. Who, who's your specific cameo? Yeah, who's the cameo yeah. you're waiting for? Yeah, we're just, getting a lot. Yeah, we, we know stuff. I don't care about being spoiled <laughs> at this point. Just just who are you waiting for? <laughs> now we wait in uh -huh. suspense. Like, I mean, I'm looking time. forward to seeing actually a lot of the cameos. I'd be looking for a lot more if, like, at the last of... Ah, yeah, Stephen Amell. Yeah. Yeah, you know, mm, I'm looking forward yeah. to Stephen Amell. Um... It'll be cool to see him again as. Is he gonna come back as the Spectre? Nah. See, I've seen the behind the scene photos, man, of him and as Green Arrow. So, but I don't know how it's gonna work. Multi yeah, I found that. But, um, so that's what I have for like the Flash news. I love that show. I just, I just, I don't. Like I told you before, man. I just don't care as much about the side characters anymore. And trying to be positive on things, I shared a picture with you. They are really trying to get me to watch Gotham Knights, man. They are really trying. Yeah, the 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 image that you sent me here, the masks look pretty good. It looks better than what they tried to do in Gotham. I I, I must say. And what we're talking about is a uh, court of owls. I mean, they had in the trailer the Talon, so it's not like they're hide or hiding or you know, spoiling anything. Um, but man, court of owls just. Come on, like mm -hmm. you're, you're you're trying to get me to watch the show. You got me. Man, so good at so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who knows? I mean, we're gonna have to check it out. Um, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to jump in and just watch the final season of The Flash here and just suck it up that way. Like <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to miss those two, the two seasons there. Uh, let me let me sum them up for you. Barry ran, did some stuff, saved some people. Barry ran some more. Iris, and Iris was there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, see that's the thing. That's that's the thing. Honestly, I think as as the show has progressed, what they kind of should have done is is have Barry do more of this stuff, you know? Um, they, they like, had, it, it, there was so much 
there's so much drama. It was less of Barry figuring out the problems and his team doing it for him and him running. At least I, okay. I know that's what it was for a while. Um, it's it's the show uh, had to ha- the shows have to have that ensemble formula, and I just think it would have I think I think it would have benefited to actually trim it down as it went. Yeah, think because I'm right there with you. Because I think it would have been amazing if like especially if for somebody like Barry with the super speed right like he doesn't need Team Flash as much anymore it should be more about on him and I feel like that's where all these shows on the last season get to they build up an ensemble and they need to strip it back down going back to one of me and James's other uh yeah, Team Flash does get more screen time than anybody. You're absolutely correct. They 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 do not need to be up there the whole time. Um, back to one of James and I's other favorite shows, Supernatural. Poor cast, you know, he was gone before the end of the series. I think like two or three episodes before the show ended, he was completely gone. So I think when the Flash ends, it needs to be like just Barry, Iris, and Joe. Um... Or something like that. I just take it back to who's left from where it all began. So, just just saying. Let's, I agree. Let's get into some <laughs> um, Superman and Lois. We're all waiting for Superman and Lois. Um, season three is coming. We got our first teaser poster, I guess you could call it, where we just saw the fortress in the distance. And that was cool. And then we got uh, our second poster. And our second poster, James, you want to talk about the second poster for Superman and Lois? Uh, it's like probably the coolest poster they've the, ever the, done. The black poster or the, uh, yeah, the black poster the black or the po- fortress poster? The black poster. Okay. Yeah, um, I mean, I like the poster. Um, you know, you got kind of like the big head of Super uh, Superman is the big, the bigger silhouette, and then Lois, and then the kids, and it goes down. Um, it looks like Metropolis might be on fire in the middle, um, right. but they've got like Smallville, the porch up on top, and they've got Metropolis down on the bottom. Um, the color. Like it's it's a little better than the last couple of seasons, you know the the really bright like white background and yeah. stuff. Didn't like that one. I, I think I think the colors and the silhouette, the sil- this this poster looks really good. Yes, it does. It it, it looks great. Um, now they did release a trailer for this one, and. The trailer was really cool because we saw a little bit more than the trailer we had seen before. And I got thinking about some things with the trailers, like the new actor that's playing Jonathan. (laughs) Part of me is like, man, they could have been really ballsy and done something where they went back to the idea of like the pre-crisis child of Jonathan, where it was one person to where before the twins and just cast this new actor to play the new Jonathan where there was no Jordan. <laughs> so they 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 changed it. Like someone came in and changed the, made it back to being like the pre-crisis um, one child they have. But that's just me being. Oh um, man. Um, but I, I want to see, because, okay, are you, like the trailer's really good. It gives us a little bit more, but it doesn't do more than the previous trailer had. Um, just some images of, you know, uh, Lara in the fortress saying, oh, a new fortress, Clark's like a fortress for everyone. Um, it looks like there's some tension between Jordan and his girlfriend, Sarah. I think, uh, Kyle is on his way out. I feel like, I hope there's not, I I just don't want to be bogged down in their drama. Like, Look, they're getting a divorce. Awesome. Let's 
let's get rid of him and let's have Pete Ross move back. So, mm. yeah. So that that brings me to. They, I mean, they did get married in, in the comics. So, have you heard the rumors, James, that there's a secret? Uh, well, I guess people are villain that's being hidden that we don't know about who the villain's going to be for this season. Like, we know Lex is there, and we know that Bruno Mannheim. But the idea that there's a third villain, have you heard this? People guessing and speculating. Do you have a guess or speculate or a want of who the villain could be? Uh, um, I haven't seen it. Um, just for the idea of, like, the, the light up, the, the one kryptonite scene in the trailer where it's like it's like he's getting blasted by like a green beam or something um I mean Metallo might be a route they could go on the show um and I have confidence with a lot of the different Metallo storylines they have out there that they could get one you know and, and at this point he could be an established Metallo like Metallo coming back Okay, okay. All right. I like that. That's cool. That's an is idea. That you, is um, that who you want to be? trying to think, you know, because, like, some... Um... I'm just trying to think, like... I mean, there's, there's, more, than I, there's more than I would like it to be. Um... I mean, if they're if they're gonna have Bruno Mannheim and Intergang, I mean, there's obvious there's a, there's an obvious apocalypse connection. Um, it doesn't have to be Dark Side. I, you know, I, I've said this before. My, you've heard my pitch for like the crossover, or whatever. I want like Mongol. Like, do do someone that hasn't been done, you know, because. Mongol hasn't shown up in any live action. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying. I'm I'm just trying to think though. Like Mongol, that would be a pretty pricey um, thing to do. I I I definitely think they could do a war world out in space. They could pull off a digital war world. Um, it'll look as real as Bizarro World did. You know what I mean? I mean, um, I think the, the, I I think there's ways to do it. I think you get an actor who's just a big dude, and then like you can use some CG enhancements, and try not to make Mongol like. You know, do some force perspective stuff with him to make him look bigger. Um, I just I don't want to see like Metallo. They, we got two different Metallos on Supergirl and Superman on that show. You even fought one of them. I just I just don't want to see the same villain again. Like, let's give us uh, something right. that's like. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, wow. It just, like, throws me and shocks me. Yeah. uh, I mean, they did Despero on The Flash. They did um, King Shark, Gorilla Grodd. I mean, uh, Mongol shouldn't be uh, out of the realm of possibility. And And Superman and Lois should have... Because it does have a kind of backing by HBO. Yeah, and they cut the they cut the video the episode order by two, so they should have some extra money to throw in for effects and make something really good, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it'll be better than the 300 episode of Smallville we got, which is fun though. <laughs> I mean that's that was the tenth season though. I mean it was like, like what movie parody can we do this week? What movie parody can we do next week? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, you're not lying. Um, and Sean says here, Superman and Lois has a bigger budget than other CW show. It could be cool. Yeah, it could. I mean, it could be right on awesome. And so I want to ask you, James, just can you name? I won't even say five things, but if you can come up with five things that you would like to see in season three of Superman and Lois that are conceivable. I don't want no like crazy theories out here like Green Lantern shows up and, you know, or (laughs) Tom Welling comes in, you know, anything like that. But just 
five things quickly you can think of that are conceivable that you'd like to see in right i mean well if we get war if we, we got mongo poor james he was so excited and he froze i'll just wait here a minute here this is ohio weather for you people bad internet Kills. Kills. But hey, you know, we're going to wait on James. Yeah, we're going to go. Wait, he's coming back. Okay. James, there you are. You're back. Yeah. I was going to say, what did you get from me? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Ah, uh, damn. Okay. Um. Well, if we got if we were able to get like a war world in Mongol, I mean that's that's one or two things. I mean, I would love to see that. Um if we got War World, we could potentially get John as a Green Lantern. That would be a good story crossover to do it on. Um since you gave me those. <laughs> um since we're bringing in Lex, um I mean, I would like to say Connor because they're bringing in Lex, but we also do have Connor on Titans, but he's going to, that's going to be over when, when that comes up and you don't want him running like concurrently whenever Titans part two comes back. Yeah. And I agree on, on doomsday <laughs> and Sean says any villain, but doomsday. <laughs> I agree. All right. Here, here's, here's mine. Okay, one, I want John or Jordan to have a costume. Two, maybe the S to appear on the back of the cape because they tease that in, in an episode of season two. Three, I want uh, Steel to get a proper Steel looking costume. Four, Pete Ross to return and swoop Lana off her feet. And five, I don't know. Five. Don't know. Tyler's been thinking about this question and he hasn't posed it to me. So it's like right on the spot. Five. I just want a really good finish and I want more. Oh, anyway, five. I want more Superman and, and Tyler Clark on screen and less of the Cushings. I think Kyle's done. There we go. There's my five. So, I think James froze again. So we're gonna do a quick commercial break, people. Hold on. Hey, can I get a dollar? Sure. That's what friends say, right? And we all know that we all have a dollar. We spend a dollar on crazy stuff. We have a loose change around the house probably for a dollar. So why not help a friend out? The Krypton Report, of course, has a Patreon, like every podcast does. But unlike other podcasts, where we're asking for a lot of money. We're just saying, hey, shoot us a dollar. One dollar a month, help us keep the podcast going, and help us to bring entertainment to you. And you can hear the fun voices of me and James. So go to patreon.com slash Krypton Report and give it a shot. Thanks. So there's my selfish plug for our one dollar Patreon. Uh, it's a good time. It's fun. James and I, we do a special show on it. And we also, you'll see us do... Um, we just finished, what do you call it? The Suicide Squad. So we our most last two episodes of movie commentaries were The Suicide Squad and Wonder Woman 84. Which painfully we realized that Wonder Woman 84 is not a good movie. Um, I'm, Sadly. I'm, I'm, Sadly. I'm willing to hear anybody's thoughts on it. like, But going back, having not watched it for two years... We did it in January. Our goal was to do it in December, but life happens. Um, being two years since we saw it, it, it was tough. And But yeah, it's just a dollar. We throw up some other shows that I do, movie pitch show, other conversation pieces. Um, our Supernatural podcast, which will return at some point in time. It's just, we're, you know, we have children, so it takes up a lot of time. But let's see. We'll get through some things. Recently, McFarlane released their Titans Build-A-Figure, which is cool, even though like it built to being a Beast Boy. 
But then they released they're doing a different Beast Boy as a regular figure. Oh, wait. Sh Sean's here. Wonder Woman 84 is a bad movie, but it does have some great superhero moments, like when Wonder Woman was flying at the end. I'll agree. It has some moments. It has one of my best lines in any DC comic book movie, said yeah. by Chris Pine. It is we talk wonderful... about a lot of the moments. <laughs> it is the wonderful, well, shit, Diana. Best line in the whole movie. <laughs> uh, let's see here. <clears throat> uh, James, you're more of the gamer than I am. Exactly. What do you What do you think about the news and images that we've got recently from the Suicide Squad kill the Justice League? Uh, it looks really fun. Looks really, really fun. Um, very interesting the way that the Sky, I haven't played Gotham Knights, um, yet, so the way that they give people abilities to, to traverse the city the way they're going, the way they do, um, looks interesting. Just from a gameplay perspective. Um, the the news that you have to play it online, like single player and multiplayer, is is you know it's I mean, a lot of games are kind of like that now, so it's not a big deal. But uh, you know it might it might be fun to be able to play with multiple people, whether friends or um, randoms, if somebody's online. Yeah, true. I think the team yeah. aspect of it looks pretty cool. I think it does look good. I'm not gonna lie. And I look forward to to, to playing. You know, um, whenever we get a chance to. Uh, the, yeah, the 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 interesting thing about it is it takes place in the Arkham universe, and it's supposed to take place five years post Arkham Knight. With uh, if anybody's played the Arkham Knight, um, knows how it ends. Um, so how how that ending will play into it, as well as you know fighting members of the Justice League. You're fighting um, everybody being controlled by Brainiac. So uh, that that that'd be pretty wicked to fight the Justice League. It will it will be. Um... Here's something interesting that I saw advertised was someone posted they were at a shop and found an issue of the death of Superman for $500. It was signed by Dan Jurgens and Jerry Siegel. I want it. I don't have to pay my mortgage for a month. Yeah, I want it. <laughs> <laughs> I want it. <laughs> Yeah, that's I worth mean, it. I mean, I mean, I suppose that would that would be worth it, right? Man, that's you're, you'll never get that, you know, unless you find it and buy it. And the only other big kind of news thing that I have is they are releasing. They just released the cover art for all the Superman 4K re-releases individually, and they do have. Um, Nice, Sean. So has his original copy from 93. Um, they are releasing the Donner Cut on 4K. And like I told you guys, like I am, I don't know. I don't want to buy the 4K box set yet. Because they're releasing the 4K of Superman 2 and Superman 2, the Richard Donner Cut together. And I just don't want to buy the box set until... Technically, I want the deluxe edition of Superman the movie that added the gauntlet scene back in. Like, that's my favorite cut of the film. And I love my Blu-ray box set. You know, it has Superman uh, the movie. Superman the movie, the, the director's cut or whatever it's called. I can't remember all the cut names. Superman 2, Superman 2, the Richard Donner cut. Superman 3, Superman 4, Superman Returns. And then all the bonus footage that's on it, 
if they would just re-release that in a 4K to 4K upgrade, then I would buy it. And throw Supergirl in there just for good measure. It'd be the ultimate, like, error of Superman on 4K. But, yeah, that's, uh, that's all I got news-wise. Yeah, I mean, from from the sound of it, you know, I want I want that Blu-ray set because I have the DVD set that had come out previously. Uh, I want the Blu-ray set, but then I would have to like buy the Blu-ray and then the 4K, but probably just stick with the Blu-ray set. Yeah. Um, There's a, there there honestly there is only so good that. Um, a movie that was shot on film in 1978 can look. <laughs> yeah. So, but so all right. So we're going to talk about the new comic wise Superman number one. James, you got your copy? I do have my copy. Now, before we get into the detail, show you the cover right? that it was. The my favorite cover that was available. Nice. Yeah, I just got the regular cover. I really like the regular oh, cover, shop. but that's that's all my shop had. The, reg the regular cover, they didn't have any more of them. So weird. Weird. Oh, I had well, to add this. This was a this is a considered a different uh, subscription. So I had to change them because some of the ones ended and then another another one started, you know? Yeah. And then a um, couple will be, will be ending soon that will be coming off. So. Sean but said I should get the regular one moving forward. Sean says, Superman the movie looks really good in 4K. The, the transfer came out very nice. Cool. I just, I just haven't bought it yet. Like, I have Superman... Okay. I have three cuts of Superman the movie on Blu-ray. I have the regular theatrical, the extended, and then I have the three-hour, like, TV cut or whatever. And I'm just, like, I don't know. I'm just not in a rush to buy the 4K. Like I said, if I get the box set, probably. Um, but we'll see. I am I might be one day just like, you know what, whatever, and buy it. We'll see. Um, but I back to Superman number one. I really like this issue. It felt like classic good Superman in the best way possible. Um, I do still think it's funny that Clark is like, you know, grown and still, but still like wears his Smallville hat and stuff. Like it's kind of weird when you see like a grown adult wearing their high school or hometown stuff. I don't know, unless you work there or something. Could just be me, but. I just think it's always kind of awkward and funny. Um, yeah, this issue is pretty cool. Um, you know, I'm kind of like, where does it pick up as as a story with Luther being in prison? You know, because he's he's out of prison in action. He's not in prison. He's. Uh, he was manipulating Metallo. Is he out of prison? Uh, I thought he was. War World Tech. I thought he was. For some reason, I was thinking he was. No, out. he's at Luther Corp. Maybe. See, that's this is why I hate when the books don't catch up with each other. When they're supposed to be in continuity, but I mean, this is post Lazarus Planet. This is Dawn of DC, so. You know, I, I'm caught up to Lazarus Planet as I can be for what's on Ultra. Me too. Me too. And I feel like so far Lazarus Planet has all just you know, been like, like... I mean, even the tie-ins with Monkey Friends. Like, all the Lazarus Planet stuff has just felt like more like these little short stories. I don't know. Maybe the next issue of, of action will be him getting arrested or whatever. Because I kind of thought the last episode, issue of action was like Dawn of DC. But maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. I just I hate when the books are slightly out of sequence when they're all supposed to be tying together. Um, and it's just getting. I thought it's getting hard. Dawn of DC on it. Maybe this comes after action, the next issue of action or something. 
I don't know. I just, I hate when the books get out of, like, alignment. And it's difficult to try right. to keep Well, we got a new shape. writer on this. We got Williamson and Campbell on the art. So, why don't you take us through the book, James? Um, why don't we get this nice classic Superman opening? This nice big old splash page. Um, there is an attack downtown Metropolis, and it's live wire. Uh, Lex Luthor is talking to Superman because um, he just knows he can hear him. Um, Superman says later that he has uh, tuned his hearing to hear certain people at like almost all times, like John and Lois and Lex and stuff. Um, a, a really funny moment here after Superman saves the day, he officiates a wedding. I love that. It just, it felt natural. And I like the little insert. Yeah, like, love that he officiates the wedding and then he's like hanging out. Like Superman's love, at the reception. <laughs> I love the insert artwork like here, like the Luther ID, the badge, um, you know, Jimmy Olsen on the next page, like these little uh, inserts that they put in. I, I don't like Clark's new glasses. I just, I, I don't like the round glasses. Yeah. Um, oh, you know, he's back to having a secret identity. Um, that's something him and Lois um, talk about in this, in this book is kind of having, uh, he says, so much has happened since I returned. I'm trying to, fo uh, to find my focus. Uh, I'm not totally used to our lives being back like this, but I'm happy. So their lives being back to having a secret identity. Um, you know, last we left Perry, he had a heart attack. So Lois Lane is now the editor in chief of the Daily Planet. Yeah, it's, it's cool. It's a nice little um, transfer tr um, upgrade for her. So it's definitely a new, it's definitely a new um, lane, uh, pun unintended, um, for her to go down. For, uh, yeah. for her character, you know, um, some growth. Uh, you know, for a long time she was, she she was, um, you know, she didn't know his secret identity, and then she was his girlfriend, and then she was his wife. And then she was a mother. Um, now, now they're getting her kind of back into the into the business end, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we have we get some Lazarus Planet stuff. Uh, yeah, something's happened at the uh, Luther Corp Tower. And it is Superman symbol on a bunch of nanobots that create a gigantic Superman symbol on top of the loop. On top of the Luther building. James seems to be having some technical problems here, people. It's all good. That's what happens. Um, but we find out Mercy Graves um, is basically Luther has left now LexCorp now rebranded as Supercorp and we get a little background about that to Superman to run and every employee is now bearing his shield and it's interesting because Lex um basically has he's like it's a different way of attacking superman and making himself more uh more of the 
figurehead for the 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 shield. Let me see if I can get James back on here. Um, you know, it's like Luther has done everything he can to always make Superman look bad, and now in a way. He's doing it by aligning Superman with his company and once again corrupting or taking over his shield imagery, much like he did in Rebirth when he was flying around um, with this symbol on himself. So we have one of the most kind of in-your-face moments that actually angers Superman is when Lex shows up as a hologram parroting jor What do you think about that, James? Yo, James, what's up? Hey. Hey, what'd you think about what'd you think about Lex? How's it going? <laughs> what'd you think about Lex showing up um as a hologram like Jarrell? <laughs> I thought it's very egotistical. I mean very Lex. Uh it was it was ridiculous. Um it was it was a very ridiculous thing. Um, it infuriated Superman. Like he's even got the L on his chest, like in a shield. Yeah. So Superman, you know, shoots off and goes, and Lex is trying to talk to him the whole time, and Lex goes to fight Parasite. And this is where the book kind of winds down is Superman's fighting Parasite, and he hears these voices saying hungry. And it's like a it's like a pit of parasites and they're all sitting hungry and they take him down. And the last page is what throws me for the biggest loop of this. You know, basically Lex tells Superman that he's not facing his enemies anymore. He's facing his, meaning Lex's enemies. But what do you think about the final page, James? Uh, I, it looks like a. James's thoughts are so deep that we're in just suspended. Stupid internet. I apologize, people. This must be rough for all of us here. Just trying to get through a conversation. Poor James is having it worst of all. It just keeps dropping. Um, so not really sure what it's going to have to do here. But what are your thoughts on this issue? Because that last page is pretty, pretty hardcore. Um, upon my first reading, I thought it was Superman. And they had like him dissected and his arm was missing. But then further investigation shows me that it looks to be something else. And James, you there, buddy? Are you there, James? The block says he's here. There he is. So what do you think about the last the last page? So I don't know who, yeah, I don't know who that, it, it looks like Bizarro's on the table, but I don't know who the enemies are. So Lex Luthor's villains is how I take it. People that we don't know that Lex maybe has been battling against in secret. Uh, and at first reading, I thought it was Superman, and I was freaking out. But then I noticed, like, the face looked, you know, messed up. But then uh, you can see the reverse symbol, so it is, like... Bizarro. So I was a little bit comforted that it was Bizarro. Yeah, it looks like he's being dissected, too. Yeah, because his arm's missing. So I was really glad that wasn't Superman on the table. So, um, and then we got Coming to Superman. Danger, horror, adventure. Jor-El told Krypton that it was doomed and no one believed him. This world is now 
also doomed. Will the people here believe you? Looks like Brainiac. So, uh, I'm continued in Dawn of DC. I'm in. Are you in? Uh, yeah, I'm in. I'm in. So, um, you know, I've from what I've read of Joshua Williamson recently, I've enjoyed his writing, and he gets he gets pretty fantastical too. So. Yeah. Yes, he does. But we're losing James here, so thanks for tuning into our live, everybody. I uh, would appreciate it. Um, keep checking out the podcast, likes, comments, everything here. Me and James are gonna go and um, beat up some, you know, internet providers. So, till next time, everybody. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> We're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find out all of our information. $1 a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash Krypton Report. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. Look up in the sky. We just want to say, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network.